What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 103 of Fusion. We're going to continue on with making this box, and what we've got so far is we have one component called our box and one sub-assembly for our axle and handle. Now, the really cool part that I really haven't showcased very much is that as-built joint, because we have all the parts in their place, but I'm still able to move them, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do as-built joint, Notice that's a shift J command. And what we can do is we can take two parts and throw a joint into relative locations. Since they're in the place I need them to be, we can just select rigid and it'll just kind of glue them together. So I'm gonna hit shift J again. Connect the axle to that right bushing, shift J again. Connect the axle to the left bushing. And there we go. We're gonna do shift J one more time. Because this time, what we're going to do is we're going to do the axle to the box. And that's not going to be rigid. This can be a revolute. But I need to pick the surface or the, the joint where it's going to be um, revolving around. And I need to collect this, select the center of this square. But it, it won't let me. Remember, if you hit control or hold down control, it'll keep that face active. So that allows you to come in and select that center of the hole. We're going to click OK, and then what I can do is I can do right click, animate model, boom, done. Everything's looking good so far. I don't want to see this rigid anymore, so it's from that those snapped, those as built joints. So I'm just going to come in here a couple times and I'll make each one of those inactive. We did do a couple of them, so you got to do it a couple times. But there you go, we got our thing done. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to create our holes, but what we can do is we can try to find, um, let's just do a new sketch. Let's do that. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the top plane here. We're going to do a similar profile, what we did for our bushings, as we're going to do for our guides. And that's going to be creating a two-point rectangle, sorry, a center rectangle, that is a quarter inch by a quarter inch. And it's going to have a circle, so C for circle. It's going to have two circles actually. Outside circle is going to be a half inch again. Inside circle is going to be three eighths. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Three divided by eight. Okay, looks good. And I want this to be a dimension of three quarters of an inch to the left. Now, I'm creating these, these guide holes for to do one of each type of cam here in a moment or later on, you're gonna put these holes based upon where you want them for your automata. You're not gonna be following me exactly, but this profile right here uh, tends to be a pretty successful one on making sure your parts stay straight. But in any case, let's keep going. I don't wanna hit finish sketch, I wanna hit rectangular pattern. We're gonna highlight all of that geometry. We're gonna to go to the left. That's gonna be a distance of three inches, right? Oh, I need to type in negative three because it was going the other way. Let's do that. So negative three, right? And I want this to be, we're gonna do this five times because I want to do one of each basic type of cam just to showcase them all. We're gonna hit finish sketch. We can also inspect the center point here to the right wall. Should also be three quarters of an inch so I know everything looks good. Okay. Let's do some extruding. So I'm gonna E for extrude. We're gonna cut out our squares and that 3 8 hole. We're gonna cut those down because we're gonna drill out a 3 8 hole on our Tomta boxes. But this sketch six, we're gonna use multiple times. So I'm actually gonna do a slow double click. We're gonna rename that sketch as guide sketch. I want to make it active again. Let's do it. We're going to E for extrude. We're going to take both of these, or sorry, all these 3 8 profiles, and we're going to go down with them about 3 quarters of an inch, so negative 0 0.375. 
just make sure we have good clearance for our cams, but also the longer our guides are, the more likely the followers are going to be sticking straight up and down. If you have thin guides, your, your followers can canter real easily. So anyways, but these are going to be new components. And then click OK. Let's go ahead and make that box inactive. So we can extrude one more time because we're going to extrude up on each of these followers or these guides so far. So that way they have a lip to sit into. When we drill the 3 8 hole, that half inch lip allows them to sit in there. We can kind of glue them in place. Those are going to be join because we're going to do join. We're going to do an eighth of an inch because we don't need much. We just need a little bit of a lip for them to sit on and then click OK. So notice we have a component here, a singular component for each of our guides. And that's not quite what we want. We want this to be a sub-assembly because it's truly individual parts. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go right click and I'm going to make each of these components or these bodies into components. And notice my symbol here turns into a sub assembly. We could do the same thing for our box, but the reason I probably didn't do that is because we need to uh, 3D print some of these other parts. We need to 3D print our guides. I don't need to 3D print our box, so making it into a sub assembly is not necessarily needed, but it is needed right here. Because if we exp exported this as one component, you would print all five at the same time. And you may need to print more, you may need to print less, you may need to print different, they may not be flush, total tons of different things. But I am going to go in here and find each one, and we're going to name them. So this is going to be guide one. Uh, where's the second one at? Where's this, where's this guy at? I don't want that sketch active. I like that sketch inactive. Where's this guy? There it is. Guide one. Where's guide two at? There we go. Uh, I thought I was going to do this, something a little bit different, and it didn't, so let's just put guide two. Let's do guide three. Guide four. And guide five. And this entire subassembly is just called our guides. Okay, we're gonna go make that box active again. Now here's a problem I ran into. Just assuming things were gonna work and they don't really. If you do an as-built joint, you can't do as-built joints in between subassemblies. If you were to click them and then click rigid like we want them to be, click OK, they still move. Even though there's no error code on the joint, even though we click both subassemblies and made them rigid, you can't do that. You can only use the as built joint command for individual components, not all of them. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to click on each guide and I'm going to do an as built joint for each guide to the box top. So shift J, make those rigid. Shift J, make those rigid. And I'm just going to keep going all the way across and made five rigid joints for each piece. Now you notice how that goes with it. That's because down here we need to make all of these pieces ground. So let's let's ground our right box. Yeah, we're gonna have to ground each one of these. Because it's a subassembly and we did an as-built joint. I might have caused something ineffective from earlier, but let's just click make some of these rigid joints invisible. So I'm clicking on one, hitting V, clicking on one, and there we go. So what we should have so far, I'm going to animate model, is our handle works. It's looking great. The only thing is, is that we got to start working on our follower rods and some of our cams. But this truly is a top-down so far because all new geometry references previous geometry. 
If I were to try to drag anything, nothing moves. Everything's glued in as its spot. But we do need to put in our physical material and appearance for these guides. So I'm going to right click, do physical material. Right click on guides, physical material. And this is going to be, let's do ABS plastic. I'm going to drop on all of them, ABS plastic. Hit escape. And I'm going to right click on those guides. Let's do physical appearance. And I'm probably going to print these in black because I don't want them to be noticeable in our automata once I, once I do these. So I'm going to try to print these out in black. So even though they're made out of ABS, I'm going to print them in a black color of filament. And everything is looking good. This is probably one of the smoothest automatas I've ever made, and I'm super happy about it. Okay, guys, you are awesome. Stay awesome. I will see you in the next last bit of videos for this series, most likely. But in any case, if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down in the comment section. I'd love to help you out. On top of that, if you've been watching my videos for some time now, I would love if you could like and subscribe. That's just too awesome. It lets me know that the content I'm making is actually helping somebody. Like I said, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.